Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Can we really make 500 horsepower with peanut port heads on a big bomb? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make 300, 400, even 500 horsepower from big block Chevy peanut port heads. That's right. But before we do, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified about all these videos. To illustrate that there is indeed power to be had using the much maligned big block Chevy peanut port heads and they are low man on the totem pole of the performance hierarchy of big block cylinder heads but you can make power from them. In fact I'm going to show you how we made more than 500 horsepower on the right kind of combination but to get things started we obviously have to start out with a stock set on an otherwise stock motor. So this is a 1992 throttle body injected Gen 5, pretty typical of the breed. What we did was got it from the wrecking yard. We took the throttle body injection off and we didn't want to run that. So we just equipped it with a dual plane, four barrel carbureted intake and a distributor and a 750 Holley. The intake that we used was a Wyan Stealth dual plane intake manifold. So run on the dyno, this high mileage Gen 5 peanut port headed big block. Produced 334 horsepower and 447, 448 foot-pounds of torque. You can see even down at 2,000 RPM, it was above 400 foot-pounds. That's what this thing is kind of designed for. It's, it's the, it, They're in full-size trucks. It's a big block, so they want to have a lot of torque so guys can tow things with them and stuff. And so it's all, you can see that this thing made peak power at... 4,300 RPM. <laughs> that's not peak torque. That's peak peak horsepower. Peak torque occurred, uh, you know, in the 34 to 3,500 RPM range. So it's all about low speed power. But here's what happened when we tried to enhance the power with a cam upgrade. Now we, we purposely put a mild camshaft in this thing. It was a Comp 256 hydraulic flat tappet camshaft. This, these Gen 5s were hydraulic flat tappets. Later on in the Gen 6, they upgraded to hydraulic rollers. This one was a 480-485 lift split, a 212, 218 degree duration split, and a 110 degree lobe separation angle. Working with this cam was also a valve spring upgrade. We ran some Comp 911-16 springs. We still had the YN Stealth intake manifold and the 750 Holley and the dyno headers with no mufflers. Well, obviously we played with the ignition timing. In this case, uh, it was an indicated 35 degrees of total timing. The power output improved to 380 horsepower. Torque was up to 485 foot-pounds. We didn't run this one. We didn't start this one quite as low, but it would probably be better than the stock one all the way down. It's a fairly mild cam, especially for a 454 cubic inch big block. Now let's take a look and see what happened when we upgraded things even further. Rather than upgrade the stock one, we actually had another motor built and then ran uh, peanut port heads on that built-up motor. To take things to the next level to find out how well the peanut ports worked and how much power they could support, we actually did a dedicated sort of build-up motor. What we did was, rather than use the junkyard motor, I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up and show you where we were able to make 450 horsepower with the peanut port heads and quite a bit of torque, 448 foot-pounds of torque. But we made a number of changes to the motor. We can take a look here and see. Uh, the first thing we did was disassemble the motor and we rebuilt it. So it was bored 30 over. We put forged pistons in it. They were a small dome, 18 to 20 cc. So it brought the compression up, you know, a fair bit over the stock motor. We had the peanut ports were um, surfaced, although we didn't mill them dramatically. They were surfaced. They received a really good valve job on them and they were freshened up. We put new valve springs in them because we were changing the camshaft. We installed an Extreme Energy 268 camshaft, which was a 515-520 lift split, a 224-230 degree duration split, and a 110 degree lobe separation angle. Still not a wild cam at all by big block standards. In fact, you can see even at 25, 2400 RPM, this thing still made a lot more power and torque than the stock combination did part of it. You know, we have a little bit more displacement. We definitely have more compression. We used a, this one was a Pro Comp dual plane Speedmaster unit, Holley 750 Holley, and the same Headman headers and, and MSD distributor. So this combination had, you know, everything was kind of upgraded that we had a little bit more compression. We had a little bit more displacement. The heads were freshened up. They weren't just, 
<laughs> junkyard pieces. But this thing did very well. It made 450 horsepower, 500 and almost 550 foot-pounds of torque, had a good broad curve, had a good idle. The 268 cam was uh, certainly something that you could drive every day, especially at this displacement and power level. So it shows that the the peanut port heads, even in stock trim, you know, these were had a really good valve job on them, but the, even in stock trim, they're capable of making power. But we're not done here because one of the things we need to look at is we've upgraded the combination here. And if we were to take a set of peanut port heads and put them on a pro stock motor, obviously that's not going to work very well. But if we were to take a set of pro stock motors and put them on a stock 454, that's also not going to work very well. So the combination of things is really what makes it work. So let's take a look now at the next step that we made to get even higher on the peanut port hierarchy. It took a little bit more combination and a little bit of work to the peanut port heads, but it eventually made over 500 horsepower. So once again, we have our stock Gen 5 454 with the peanut port heads making 334 horsepower, 448 foot-pounds, and then to that we added a camshaft, and then to that we added a modified motor with good cylinder, or uh, rather good pistons, good rods, we bored it 30 over, put more compression because we could have 18 to 20 cc dome piston in it, and then put a bigger camshaft in it, the Extreme Energy 268 cam, and then we were up at 450 horsepower and nearly, and nearly 550 foot-pounds of torque. To push this thing up over 500 horsepower, we retained the same short block. We made a few changes to it though. We put a little bit better um, oil pan assembly on it. it was, this was more of a boat pan, so it was a deep sump with a kick out and stuff on it. So the, the windage, or the, uh, there was no windage tray, but the no windage tray bolted to the mains, but there was a, an integrated windage tray in the pan. So that obviously helps power. But the other thing that we did to this was change the I'll go ahead and show you. We changed the um, changed the camshaft dramatically, and as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the we'll get rid of the stock stuff, so that we can just kind of compare. This is the difference between our 450 horse version with the 268 cam and the peanut port heads, and then our peanut port heads with a much bigger camshaft. So our new combination was the same short block, but it had a much bigger camshaft. It was Extreme Energy, uh, an XR300. So it was a 560, 580 lift split and a 248, 254 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. So much more camshaft than the fairly mild 268 cam that we were running. This was also a hydraulic roller, so we did a retrofit hydraulic roller. We had to put a cam button and that kind of stuff on it. The reason that we did this, we didn't do this camshaft and all of this, all of these changes for the peanut port heads. We did it for a big cylinder head test that we had going on. So we were going to use the peanut port heads basically as the stock version, and then everything else would be going up from there. But while we were doing that, we came across a combination with peanut port heads that made over 500 horsepower. So that's why I'm bringing it to you. In addition to the cam change, we also did an intake manifold change. We used an Edelbrock Victor Jr. as a 454. Oh, in this case, with a 950 Holly, we had the same long tube headers and same MSD and all that. So that stuff worked fairly well. But we were able to make this thing made 511 horsepower. And you can see that um, torque was pretty flat, but the peak occurred with 513 or 14 foot pounds of torque. The interesting thing here is one, it made over 500 horsepower with oval port heads, which we know is possible. There are lots of guys out there doing that actually. And if you get a cylinder head that flows 250, 260 or, or so with one of these things, and we also, on these heads, we put a little bit bigger intake valve in the, in the um, peanut port heads. So we did upgrade the intake valve. We kept the exhaust valve the same. Um, the, obviously they had a good valve job and stuff on them. But this is what worked out with the peanut port head. But the interesting thing here is to make 500 horsepower, we had a fairly good combination. We had a fairly good sized camshaft in it. It had a reasonable amount of compression ratio because we had the, the 20 or so CC dome piston in on a 468. So compression was probably near, near 10 to one or so. And it had a single plane intake manifold, but really that's not a combination that you would put together. I mean, if you were gonna run from 4,500 to 6,500, let's say, your choice wouldn't be a peanut port head. 
I think most people here that were looking at peanut pork performance would probably pick the 450 horse version because it makes so much more torque and it makes more power from 2,500 to 4,500, which is where most people would probably be spending their time if they had a peanut port application. To give you an idea how much the peanut port heads were restricting this combination, this wilder combination, here's what the motor did when we put a set of Airflow Research Aww. 265 oval port heads on it. The power output jumped up like 100 horsepower, 613 horsepower. Peak torque was way up, but it was shifted out quite a bit Peak torque was 558 foot-pounds of torque. So with a good head, this combination obviously was working a lot better than with the peanut port head, but it's possible to make over 500 horsepower with a peanut port. You just have to decide, would I be better off maybe not trying to make that kind of peak power and looking more at the torque and the power production down below 5,000 RPM? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn from this little venture testing peanut port heads on big block Chevys? Well, we learned one thing. It definitely is possible to make 500 horsepower with the much maligned peanut port heads. That's not really the question, can we do it? The question is, should we do it? If you look at the results of these tests, making 500 horsepower required, you know, fairly good mods to the motor and also push power out fairly high RPM because we had a big camshaft in it that we were using to do other testing. Now, the reality is we probably shouldn't do that combination, but what if we did something different? What if we combined our 450 horse version with our 500 horsepower version to get the best combination of both of those? I'd like to see a combination with peanut port heads with a dual plane intake with less camshaft, but maybe a little more work to the peanut port heads, maybe better intake valve and an exhaust valve, and maybe a little bit of port work. That should allow us to make our 500 horsepower and retain all of our torque. Our mixture holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.